Hello and welcome to another video. Now this is still another set of logarithm um, problems. I'm just going to run through them, learn the principles that you find in this and let's be happy. Let's do it. So the first question is this one. The logarithm of an argument to base two is negative one. We apply a definition of logarithms to it so we can get out of this. So we know that the logarithm of an argument um, to a base provided is always the power to which you must raise the base to obtain the argument. So we can by that say that um, the logarithm of x to base seven will be equal to the base to negative one. It's two to negative one, which is the same thing as one over two. Okay, um, now we can repeat that process to know what x exactly is, and we say that the logarithm of x to base seven will be, um, will be seven is one half, which means our x will be equal to seven to one half. Okay, which means x equals the square root of seven. And that's it. So the first one is that simple and straightforward. Um, let's go to number two. I'm going to come back to number three. I might have to move this up so I can use enough space down here. Ln x. Ah, that's the question. Okay, so you have ln x here, ln x here. For some students, the first thing they want to do is um, divide both sides by ln x. At least it gets rid of ln x on this side, and they know they have one here. You don't want to do that. Because if you do that, you end up getting fewer answers. This question actually has three answers. If you do that, you've gotten rid of one already and um, you might end up just getting one answer instead of three. So you're getting 33% of your grade. So what you want to do is, let's just get rid of this ln x. Let's re replace it with something else that's easy to work with. So let's just say let um, y be equal to um, ln x. So we can rewrite this equation. It becomes y to the 13th equals 13y. Now this looks a lot easier to deal with. Okay, so in this case, don't divide both sides by y like I just explained. Move this to this side and leave zero here as if you're going to solve a quadratic equation. Well, this is a, not a quadratic equation actually, um, but that's the same principle you need to apply. So we go to this, we'll say y to the 13th minus 13y will be equal to zero. And you can now factor y. You're left with y to the 12th minus 13 equals zero. So you see now, I now have two options. I have y equals zero or y equals, uh, sorry, y to the 12th. Let's get rid of this first, okay? y to the 12th will be equal to 13. So y equals 0, or let's not do it that way. Let me write it out. will be y to the 12th minus 13 equals 0. And that would end up with, what is y equals 0? Well, we can do a substitute. But let's get the final answers first, OK? So y equals 0. We can continue here and say y to the 12th equals 13. And then y will be the 12th root of 13, okay? And something I need to bring to your attention. When you take an even root of anything, you have to do the plus or minus. You have to recognize that if this power is even, then it means when you take the root of it, you have to recognize the absolute value, okay? So, for example, you can write it this way, that the absolute value of y is actually the 12th root of 13, okay, so that y itself will be plus or minus the 12th root of 13. So this is your answer. So y equals 0 or y equals positive 12th roots of 13 or the negative 12th roots of 13. And then we can now go back and get what our 
x is. Remember y is ln x. So we can go back now and let's do this here. Okay, so based on what we have, we can say that ln x equals 0. So we have ln x equals 0 or ln x equals um, positive 12th root, write it this way, of 13, or it is equal to the negative 12th root of 13, negative 12th root of 13. Oh, I need to write my 12 well. Yeah, okay, let's do it this way first. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do it this way. Uh, that's gonna be the negative 12th root of 13. Okay, that looks better. That's still terrible though, but um, I forgive me. <laughs> okay, so now we wanna get x. Remember, if you wanna get x, you just take the e of the other side. So it means x will be equal to the first option, e to the zero, or it will be e to the 12th root of 13, or it is e to the negative 12th root of 13, okay? So x equals, what is e to the zero? Anything to zero is one, okay? And this one will be, I'm gonna be careful writing the final answer. It's gonna be e to the, I'm just gonna write this nicely, 13, and write 12 here. Ooh, that looks good. And then the final one will be e to the negative. I'm gonna write that too. And write 12 here and write 13 here. And those are the three answers you expected to show for your work. You see, you would not get three answers if at the beginning you took out one of the ln x's, okay? You will not be able to get three answers. Number two, if you didn't recognize that taking the, the even root of anything will lead you to, to consider plus or minus, then you would have gotten just one answer, and this would have been the only answer you would get, and you would not get the points for these other two answers. Let's go to the third one. Okay, so the third one looks crazy, actually, because you're equating ln x with a polynomial. Well, we haven't done anything like that so far. Okay, um, let me move this up a bit so we have enough space. So number three, I'm gonna write it as ln x equals x minus four um, squared. So what you have is a logarithm function equated to a polynomial this is actually a perfect square, as you can see, it's a square. And let's see what we can do, okay? Because if you open this up, what you're gonna get, you can't make this e2, because if you make it e2 anything, it still contains x. This also has x. So we can say ln x equals, if you open this up, it's gonna be x squared minus 8x plus 16. Let's solve it as if it's a quadratic equation. Let's bring this to this side and have a zero on one side. We're gonna have x squared minus 8x minus ln x plus 16 equals zero. Can we use the quadratic formula to solve this? So this is gonna be our a, this is gonna be our b. <laughs> okay, so we don't, now this is not c because so the problem is, are we adding this to the B or we're adding this to the C? See, it's impossible for us to decide because this is actually not, uh, there is no solution. It is impossible to solve it using algebra. The only way out of this is to plot the graph. You see, a lot of times students think that, why do you have to know how to plot a graph? Well, this is one of those rare cases where using a graph is what saves you. So we're gonna plot the graph of ln x and plot the graph of this um, perfect square, this parabolic function. And whatever we get, 
will be our answer, the point of intersection of both, both graphs. Now, let me show you what the graphs will look like. So, if I have this graph here, if you plot the graph of L and X, it goes this way. Okay, kind of. Let's just leave it that way. Now, the graph of X minus 4 squared is going to be, is basically the graph of X squared that has been moved four, um, four points or four units to the right, okay? When it's negative four, it means you're moving it to the right. So this graph is going to go this way and it's going to touch, not intercept. It's going to just touch the X axis because it's perfect at the point. So this is X equals one. Let's say this is two, three. That's a terrible graph I, I sketched, okay? But let's just let it be. Let's say this is the point four. Let me not put the marks there, okay? So this is the point four. It's going to be a graph that goes like this. Let's use another color. something like this. So we know in reality that these two curves actually intersect, intersect somewhere, but that's somewhere only a graph can tell us. It's somewhere here and here. And you know what? That value here is gonna be between one and four, and it's gonna be something beyond four. We don't know. But if you use your calculator, I was able to cheat before I solved this problem, I noticed that the answers are about 2.9 and 5 point something. Okay, those are the two values. Sketch these two on your graph and you see that the approximate locations are 2 point something very close to 3 and something um, around the middle of 5. That's the way out. Okay, if you learned anything, give this video a shout out. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like. That's the same thing. Give it a positive comment. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when the next video shows up. My name is Newton Okewoye. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.